Hi, your host is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our second video on volumetric analysis where we're actually going to get to a volumetric analysis. Okay, cool. So we're going to be learning how uh, to do a volumetric analysis. Okay, so volumetric analysis is the process of using specific volumes, specific volumes, that's why it's called volumetric analysis, of solutions to solve for unknown concentrations of solutions. Okay, so you have a uh, certain volumes of solutions to work out the concentrations of uh, a unknown solution. Okay, so uh, if you're making sandwiches, and that's a bit of a segue, but anyway, like you know how it goes, uh, stoichiometry and sandwiches, right? If you're making sandwiches and you are grabbing slices of bread out of a bag you can't see into, right? You can work out how many slices of bread were in the bag if you count the slices of ham that you've been used up when you run out of bread, okay? So the idea is that um, this mimics a chemical reaction for all intents and purposes. You have two reactants going together, all right? One of them, you can't see how much there is, all right? That's your unknown solution concentration, okay? Unknown solution, it's concentration. You have no idea how much is, um, what concentration that is. But if you know that it reacts with something else, and you know that uh, when the reaction ends, then you'll be able to work out uh, more information about it. So if, let's say if I use 62 slices of ham to make my boring sandwich of one ham slice and two slices of bread, when I run out of bread, okay, how many slices of bread has been, have been used up, all right? It'd be double of 62, which would be, what, 124, okay? So to solve this, a few things must be known. You, know, you must know how many slices of ham are used, or ideally how much of one reactant. That's your known solution, your known solution. All right, when does the bread run out? This is when your reaction is complete. Okay, so your reaction is complete at some point in time, and so therefore you know that you to stop at that point. All right, and the ratio of bread to ham, which is your balanced equation. Okay, so let's go through that in terms of actual chemicals and stuff. So, volumetric analysis uses the following things to work out uh, the concentration of an unknown solution. Okay, so you have a standard solution which is of known concentration. So if you get if you hear someone say a standard solution, it means that you know its concentration, and generally you will know its volume as well. This gives you the exact amount of one reactant, and when I say amount, I mean number of moles of one reactant. An indicator to show you when the pH changes significantly, which gives you an indication about when the reaction is complete. Okay? And then you must uh, have known reactants, which then uh, you use to create a balanced equation. Okay, so you must know how those two reactants react with each other. Okay? So that's kind of uh, what you need for a volumetric analysis. One known, some way to know that the reaction is finished, and you need to know how they react with each other in what uh, ratio. Okay, the process is, as what you do is, a specific known volume of a solution is delivered into a clean conical flask, right, using a pipette, which is something that we'll discuss in, a bit, uh, in the next video. This, is, this can be the known or the unknown solution, but the most important part is that you know that it's a specific known volume all right you add the indicator which tells you into the conical flask which tells you when uh, the reaction is complete because it'll change color then a specific volume of reactant solution is delivered to the conical flask using a burette we'll go through what a burette is in the next video as well until the reaction goes to completion as indicated by the indicator changing color so what a burette is, I might just quickly go through this. It's a long column here with a tap at the bottom. You put in your solution in there. So you got solution in there. You open the tap, the solution comes out and the volume there drops, okay? So you keep on adding it in until the color changes and then you stop, okay? So wherever it started and wherever it finished, this will be the amount of volume that was delivered into the, um, into the conical flask. So. The amount of solution delivered uh, is determined by the difference between the initial and the final volumes on that burette. And we'll go through that later on. 
Once the reaction has gone to completion, so once the color change has occurred, you can use the concentration and volume of your known, so that's to get the number of moles of that, and your volume of your unknown solution to solve for the concentration of your known solution. So effectively, you have the concentration, oops, you have the concentration known, and you have the volume of your known, which leads to the number of moles of your known, which leads you, with a balanced equation, to the number of moles of your unknown. If you have the number of moles of your unknown, then with uh, in conjunction with the volume of your unknown, you can work out the concentration of that unknown. Okay, and that's the idea behind titrations. So we're going to um, have a look at the equipment and then the process later on. And then we're going to have a go at these, uh, hopefully by the end of term. All right, that's it. Adios.